Hello, I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York. Welcome to One to One. In New York City, 17,500 people are arrested each year for marijuana possession, according to the New York Times. And the Bronx has the fourth highest per capita arrest rate for marijuana possession of any county level jurisdiction in the country. African American and Latino communities are the hardest hit by this kind of law enforcement. Government health surveys have found that young whites use marijuana at higher rates than young blacks and Latinos, but the NYPD has arrested blacks for marijuana possession at seven times the rate of whites and Latinos at nearly four times the rate of whites. State Senator Liz Kruger has emerged as a hero of New York State's movement to legalize marijuana. She has introduced the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act, a bill that calls for marijuana to be sold and regulated like alcohol. It's a new approach after years of racially discriminatory outcomes. But what are its chances? Welcome, Senator. Thank you. Everybody I talk to seems to think that recreational marijuana is about to become legal in New York State. But there have been bills to that effect that have been uh, introduced and reintroduced over several years that have never been approved. So what's happening now? What's different now? I think a couple of things are different now. For one, we are now one of the largest states in the country that has not addressed this issue. And we are being surrounded by states and even the country of Canada on another one of our borders where marijuana is legal. So I think the powers that be have realized this is a phenomena that is happening on a national level that they can't come up with really good answers about why we're not moving forward with legalization. And the public opinion polls continue to show growing support for a legalized model of marijuana. You also had the, uh, the state health department report that came out in the summer that recommends that legalization is the way to go. And the state department of health did the report because the governor asked them to after signaling his openness to our moving forward. And that was the other big change. Governor Cuomo decided to take a position that he was open to the legalization of marijuana, where up until then, he had absolutely not considered this. And of course, in New York State, you need the legislature to pass in both houses and the governor to sign. So if the governor's not interested, you know you're not going anywhere. Do you think it had anything, that, that the governor's change of heart had anything to do with uh, his Democratic opponent, Cynthia Nixon, who uh, was fervently in support of legalization? Do you think that nudged him at all? Well, interestingly, Governor Cuomo came out saying he was exploring this back last January in his State of the State or his budget proposal. I think it was the State of the State address. So it was even before Cynthia Nixon got in the race. I think that I believe him when he said, I'm looking at all the states around us. I'm looking at Canada. It economically does not make sense for New York not to go forward with some proposal. And I think the um, health department estimated that if recreational marijuana is legalized, it could possibly boot, uh, boost state taxes by $700 million. I'm less interested in the tax question than most of the other questions, because one of my assignments, I believe, as the author of the bill, is to make sure we put the illegal market out of business which means not to get greedy and overprice legal marijuana, because other, if we do overprice it, then as other states have seen, they end up with a parallel system of an illegal cheaper market mm -hmm. and a legal more expensive market. It's fine if New York State earns revenue and we have specific ideas of how that revenue should be spent, but I'm really particularly concerned about getting this out of the criminal justice system expunging records of young people whose lives have been harmed, having a safe product that you know what it is you're buying when you buy it, which means making sure we do not make ourselves too expensive and the taxes can impact. So it is true, the economic analysis is that we will create a huge new economy of legal jobs for a legal product, but I'm trying to downplay people's expectations of how this is our silver bullet for yeah. tax revenue. Do you think there is just 
also growing recognition of how the enforcement of the laws against marijuana in particular has affected the African American and Latino communities? Well, that was my number one reason for going into agreeing to carry this bill when it was very unpopular to carry as opposed to now. Um, frankly, my horror when I look at the stat statistics done statewide of the distribution of arrests for cannabis, again, as a Caucasian adult, I know that I smoked marijuana when I was a teenager. The last time was 1976. And I know that young white people are smoking marijuana at exactly the same rate or higher than black and Latino young people. And yet, we're only arresting black and young people, black and Latino young people. We're only putting them through the system, giving them records, preventing them from potentially getting the best paying jobs, the education they need, and in some cases, putting their entire families at risk of losing their subsidized housing simply for even a misdemeanor um, a cannabis arrest. So that was my original motivation and stays my motivation. Now the other side of that coin, if we're not arresting people for personal use cannabis, it's estimated the state of New York will save $678 million in criminal justice costs per year. Almost $700 million, not in taxes, but in savings when the police aren't busting you, bring you down to the precinct, some processing through the system, and perhaps court dates. For smoking a joint on the corner. Or yeah. even for having it in your pocket, yeah. not smoking it on the yeah. corner. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the specifics of your bill? Okay, so to start, we would make it legal to buy marijuana only if you're 21 years or older. And that is because the medical community has done research that's shown Marijuana is far, far less dangerous and far, far less addictive than alcohol, but it can have an impact on the developing brain. So the healthcare experts recommend to me that we limit consumption until you're 21 years old. So you can only go and buy under my bill when you're 21. We discourage the actual smoking, because again, the medical community says the danger of cannabis is you shouldn't take anything burning into your lungs. So with a legal market, there will be all kinds of alternatives for using cannabis that don't involve burning it. It won't be illegal to smoke, but it will be illegal to smoke anywhere where it's currently illegal to smoke, the indoor air quality law. So if your building, um, your bar, your office, which is pretty much all of them here in New York City, are no smoking, you won't be able to smoke cannabis either. It also won't be legal to smoke cannabis in public. You can use it in other ways, but not smoke it walking down the street. Um, there will be a set of standards for selling, manufacturing, producing, growing. So like alcohol, it will be licensed by a state agency um, sort of from top to bottom. There will be an allowance for personal growing of a certain number of plants for your own home use, but not for selling. Mm -hmm. So that's a big question I get a lot. Can I grow it myself? And the answer will be um, yes, in moderation. Um, and no, you cannot sell homegrown. Um, there will also be rules about not advertising to children. Um, I, I can't stand when the alcohol and tobacco companies use cartoon characters to get children interested in their products. Same story for cannabis. There'll be no advertising or targeting to children. In fact, at least in one version um, of the bill that we're discussing, no advertising at all. Um, because the truth is, people will figure out where it is and where they can buy it. We want to keep a separation of the medical marijuana program and the recreational marijuana program, while at the same time recognizing we need to strengthen and expand medical marijuana because those are versions of cannabis products that have specific medical uses and we've remained a state that makes it too difficult even once you get a prescription to get access to medical marijuana. We only have, I think, 30 open dispensaries in the entire state of New York. You can go to over 2,000 pharmacies with a prescription and get dangerous op opioids, even morphine, 
but we only have 30 locations where you can get mar medical marijuana. Really? Yes. So we need to do some work to improve our medical program, but keep it separately identified from our recreational. Now you're in the Senate uh, where the Republicans have a majority and I think every Republican in the Senate has said at this point that they don't support legalization. Mm. Is, no, yes? Well, they are in the majority what I left in June. Um, I'm not sure but when they may the not be. <laughs> I'm not sure when the show airs, but we're yeah. feeling pretty good that they won't be in the majority after November 6th. And even then, there were Republican senators who would privately say they were not opposed to this and it was very popular in their home district. They weren't saying, I'm going to sign my name onto the bill. Um, but they weren't even going as far as saying, I could never imagine voting for it. So again, the positions of people are evolving. And by the way, there is legal marijuana in quite a few red states. This has not fallen out okay. as a blue versus red issue nationally. And do, do you have legal support for legalization? You have a majority support for legalization in the assembly? I don't even know if I can tell you that. That requires 76 votes in the assembly. Crystal Pupil Stokes is the lead sponsor in the assembly. She's an African-American assembly woman from Buffalo. She's been working this hard in her conference and building more and more support. But we would have to call her up on the phone and ask her whether she thought she had 76 votes. It's usually easier to move progressive bills through the assembly than the Senate. But again, I think we're getting to the point in time where the recognition that legalizing marijuana is actually a good, not a bad for the state, um, has popular support in upstate New York, in rural New York, where farmers see new agricultural opportunities, in suburban New York, where soccer moms don't want their kids ending up involved in the police system either. Um, so there's really pretty broad support. And we've already legalized hemp, and so we have farmers growing hemp throughout the state and they're very excited about the new opportunities um, for a new industry in agriculture hemp. It's worked very well for them. And so I think they're very, very open to the idea of expanding new opportunities in cannabis as well. We're gonna take a short break, then we'll be back with New York State Senator Liz Kruger after this message. Welcome back to One to One. I'm Cheryl McCarthy, and I'm talking with New York State Senator Liz Kruger. So are the results of the midterm elections crucial in whether marijuana gets legalized in New York or not? I think the midterm elections are crucial for many reasons, both nationally and at the state level. At the state level, if the elections, in fact, re represent this blue wave we're all hearing about, there will be a Democratic majority in the New York State Senate, and that will mean a new majority leader. I believe Andrea Stewart Cousins will be the majority leader if the Democrats take the majority. And yes, I think there will be greater openness to the possibility of passing legalized marijuana, either as a freestanding bill through both houses or potentially as part of the budget package the governor may introduce um, there's a rumor that he might be interested in introducing legalized marijuana within his budget proposal. And I think he will get a serious hearing on that from both houses if we're both Democrats. Of course, it also opens us up to endless other critical bills that need to pass that never have under Republican control, some of which you and I have discussed on other shows. So reproductive health, fair funding for education, um, housing policy. There's a very long list of really important legislation a Republican Senate has stopped from moving forward, and I would include in that legalized marijuana. One in 10 New Yorkers have said that they use marijuana during the last month. So why do you think the people who oppose legalization oppose it? Well, it's very interesting because the governor has been having a series of listening sessions around the state, 20 listening sessions in different parts of the state. And I've been reading about what happens at some of the 
listening sessions I've had, people at others taking notes for me, they are almost all universally in support. Anyone is welcome to come and testify. There's a small number of people who talk about the gateway drug concern, and that has been disproved by scientific research really for about 70 years now. Marijuana is not a gateway drug to addiction to other drugs. And in fact, in the states that have legalized, they have seen a reduction in opioid use. So in fact, marijuana can in fact be an alternative that is much less dangerous to people than some other drugs. But some people talk about that. Some people are convinced um, that it is actually unhealthy for people. And I'm not trying to pitch that it is healthy. I'm not even trying to pitch that anyone should use it. I don't plan on using it unless a doctor prescribes it for a medical reason. But the truth is alcohol is actually dangerous. Tobacco we know kills you. Right. Alcohol is much more addictive than cannabis and actually does kill some people. And they're both legal. And they're both legal and taxed and regulated. And yet marijuana, less dangerous than either, we again are ruining young people's lives by sending them through the criminal justice system. There's a real inconsistency in our thinking. So there's not that many people who come forward. Now there are some police unions who have opposed it, but I've also been working with a group of retired police, DEA, narcotics detectives, who sit there and will testify to the fact that they spent their lives busting young people for personal use marijuana accomplished nothing, wasted their lives, ruined the young people's lives, and speak from the experience of being law enforcement officials, including retired judges, who say our system of prohibition has not gotten, stopped anyone from having access to cannabis, but has ruined a lot of people's lives. And in fact, they point out, if we legalize cannabis under my bill where you can't buy it until you're 21, it will actually be harder to get then than it is now. Because right now, at least in New York City, you and I could put an app on our phone and get illegal marijuana delivered to us within about 15 minutes. We wouldn't really know what it was, what it might have been mixed with, who we're buying it from, et cetera, et cetera. But it's easy to get. While if it's a legalized market, you'll have to at least have some 21-year-old buy it for you and give it to you or have fake ID. And I'm not saying teens won't figure out how to get it anyway, but it'll be harder for them to do so. And even if they do, at least you know they're not getting dangerous product that you're not sure what it is from some cartel-affiliated entity. I really want organized crime out of this business. Assuming that Andrew Cuomo is elected governor, and probably will be, so what happens next with the marijuana bill? So if he does introduce it in his budget, it would probably get negotiated the details within the budget negotiations, and then it could pass as early as April 1st. If, that, if he doesn't introduce it in his budget or it does not succeed in staying in the budget negotiations, then there will be Crystal and my freestanding bill continuing to try to pass it in both houses, which could happen as early as 2019 or might take longer. Medical, medical marijuana, as, as we've said, has been legal in New York for a few, a few years. About four years. Okay. Uh, it's legal in New York and in 20, 28 other states, plus the Washington, um, D.C. Um, the figure that I came up with is about, there are about 60,000 certified medical marijuana users in New York. In New York right now, however, you can't, even if you are certified for medical use, you can't smoke it. You can take it as a pill. You can, I think, a, a topical version. Um, there are also drops you can put under your tongue. Okay. There's a variety of different models. Okay. Uh, why is that? It seems a little prudish to me. What's that? What's that about? Well, I think when it comes to medical marijuana, the specific intent, although it was Department of Health that set the rag, so you'd really have to ask them, was that there are those in the medical community who take the position that inhaling, burning things into your lungs is a bad idea medically, that it, it's at least a lung irritant, even if it doesn't cause other illnesses. And in fact, for medical marijuana, 
we're often talking about people who are um, dealing with cancer and chemo and radiation and already have weakened immunos, uh, immune immunological system. systems. And so inhaling burning product is really not advised by doctors who work with people with those illnesses. So I don't think that it's so prudish. I think some people don't realize you can use cannabis in a variety of ways, having the exact same effects that you are looking for, either medical or recreational, and not actually need to burn flowers and inhale them into your lungs. Eight states and Washington, D.C. have legalized marijuana for recreational as well as medical use. How well has that worked out? You know, every state's done it differently um, because, again, we still have this strange federal restriction. Um, but I think that if you checked with the people in each of those states in Washington, D.C., they would tell you, the vast majority would tell you that they are glad they made the decision to legalize. You know, there, again, there are different models, and some places allow public smoking, some don't. Some, people, some areas allow almost the equivalent of bars for marijuana, and some don't. Um, some are dealing with the question of when tourists come to their state, perhaps with the intent of being able to use legal cannabis, but you've outlawed smoking anywhere, they're going, I'm here, I'm in a hotel, I came to use marijuana, and I can't figure out where to use it. So there are some, locations, some states that are trying to think through amending their bills so that they're more tourist friendly. Um, you know, we have the new complication of, and I think it's one of the things that motivated the governor to realize we needed to rethink our laws. Of course, if you live five minutes from the Massachusetts border, which is much of just, um, just to the east of Albany where I go to work, or you can be in Massachusetts in 25 minutes. So everybody who might decide to cross the state line to Massachusetts, to Vermont, to Canada, to use cannabis, all the issues of making sure it's not crossing state lines because in fact it is still federally illegal. So those are real issues to deal with. There are companies thinking through how you finance and bank revenue from marijuana because technically money made in the cannabis business cannot um, be put in banks under federal law. But we're learning there are all kinds of ways because everyone in the world uses credit cards that you can move through the system and avoid violating federal law. Um, so there are like endless issues to be thought through, but that's why Crystal and I have spent years watching what happens in certain states saying, okay, we're not making that mistake. Oh, that worked really well over there. Let's look at how California is doing that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the other part of our bill we haven't talked about is in our bill, the tax revenue, and we certainly do want to make tax revenue. We just don't want to have out of control costs. Um, we put a significant amount of that money back into the communities that were hurt the hardest from prohibition, so putting back into low-income communities for restorative justice, money that is made from legalized marijuana, making sure that small businesses, mom and pops in black and, black and Latino communities can actually participate in a legalized market, putting some of the money into drug education, drug prevention. We want this money that we do gain to actually go back into the communities who were facing the problems of prohibition and other illegal drugs and try to help them. So those would be requirements. They were requirements in our, in our bill, yes. So how soon do you think this is gonna happen? Well, if the governor does decide to put it in his budget and it succeeds, then it could pass by April 1st. Does that mean April 2nd we legalize? No, but laws never like, work like that. I would guess the earliest would be the beginning of 2020. Okay, because you have to put the structure in place. You do, and you have to develop systems and licenses, et cetera. But January, the governor makes his state of the state address where he usually lays out 
his top policy priorities for the year and what's going to be in his budget. So I would all listen to the state of the state address and see whether he addresses legalized marijuana within that speech. I'm told that there are some entrepreneurs who have already set up shop uh, in t anticipation <laughs> of marijuana going legal. So, Well, there are plenty of entrepreneurs here in New York asking questions. I've I get asked to speak at events constantly about how will this roll out. And all I can do is explain how it would roll out if my bill became law, but the fact is it can go through many changes between piece of paper and, and what's going to happen. But yes, we have a very broad universe from the agricultural sector to the manufacturing of certain products to the production, because there's all kinds of production opportunities, to trucking, to unions wanting to make sure that these are union shops in this new business, to retailers. We have people in the alcohol industry wondering how it can overlap or not. Um, we have people from other states saying, I know, I know it has to be state by state, but we'll move here to New York to set up our shop here. So I must admit there's an enormous amount of growing support from people who see opportunities for new economic growth. Well, it could be an interesting year. Yes, it can be. <laughs> I'm afraid we're out of time. I want to thank New York State Senator Liz Kruger for joining me today. For more information on what she's doing to legalize and regulate marijuana, you can visit her website, LizKruger.com. For One to One, I'm Cheryl McCarthy.